In this episode, we're going to do a troubleshooting challenge, specifically using documentation to solve issues. I'll show you how to do it, and we'll talk about the concepts along the way. In this activity, we will use the documentation we created earlier in the troubleshooting challenge documenting network activity to guide network troubleshooting efforts. It has been discovered the network that we worked with previously has developed communication problems. Some hosts are unable to ping other hosts and the internet. It is our job to determine what the issues are and to locate and repair them. Network issues could exist in any device. We have to make sure that we check for comprehensive errors, including address configuration, interface activation, routing, and NAT. We'll be discussing how to use various techniques and tools to identify connectivity issues, how to use documentation to guide troubleshooting efforts, how to identify specific network problems, how to implement solutions to network communication problems, and then finally, verifying network operation. Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. This episode is part of my series on configuration examples for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Tech and Tracer Lab 12.6.2 Troubleshooting Challenge. Use documentation to solve issues. Tech and Packet Tracer file opened up. On the left side, I have our working area where we'll go and configure our devices and figure out what our problems are. On the right side, I have the instructions. On the very bottom right, I have the Packet Tracer activity window that opens up when you open up the Packet Tracer file. It has the instructions. In the upper right, the majority of the right side, I have a Word document of those same instructions. The reason I'm going to use the Word document is because we need to document all of our um, issues we find and then what we did to fix them. Here's our topology. This is a continuation of the Packet Tracer Lab. We just did Packet Tracer Lab 12.6.1, Troubleshooting Challenge, Document the Network. During that lab, what we did is we figured out what this cloud looks like. We figured out that there was several routers inside of here, some switches, figured out what the IP addresses were between them. We were able to get all that information and put it in our addressing table. Here in my document right here, I have all that information figured out, what we, what we figured out in that last lab. This is the information. You should have this, your document, will be from 12.6.1. I have all this information filled in with the IP addresses, default gateways, the devices and what interfaces, all that information filled in for you. Here, I just went through it. I rearranged these a little bit. I put the hub together with all their interfaces. I put the branches, HQs, put all those routers here, basically in alphabetical order. Then I put the which is at the end, put those in all alphabetical order. This is all the information we figured out from our previous lab, 12.6.1. Now in this lab, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our network documentation. So what we figured out, I also have the map I drew out. I also have the topology I drew out here. So we can see that I do have several sheets of that topology. And this is going to help me figure out what's wrong with my network. We're gonna use the documentation to guide troubleshooting efforts. We're gonna identify specific network problems. So there are some problems on our network. We're gonna implement the solutions and then we're gonna verify that they actually worked. So it's been discovered that the network you worked with previous in the previous packet tracer has developed communication problems. So in the previous one in 12.6.1, it worked just fine. Now, over the course of time, there's some issues and we need to figure out what they were. So you're going to use your documentations. Some hosts are unable to ping other hosts or the internet server. It's your job to determine what the issues are and to locate and repair those problems. Network issues could exist in any device. Be sure to check for comprehensive errors, which would include addressing, interface activation, routing, and of course, network address translation. Our, pa our passwords for VTY is Cisco and our privilege exec word, your password is class. Part one, CES connectivity. 
All hosts should be able to ping each other in the internet server. Determine if this requirement is met. If not, identify which hosts and network should be further investigated. Record the device information in the table below. So we're gonna go with, make sure that they can ping each other and also ping the internet server. If we run into any problems, we're gonna fill that in here in the bottom of this table. When we find any problems here from part one, we're gonna go ahead and list it down here. We're gonna list the device, the issue, as we find problems and then what actions we're taking. So from the hosts which have communication problems, use ICMP to determine network problems to be located. From the host PCs, access devices in the network and display configurations. That's where we'll be using Telnet with this information, using the information from our maps and other, other documentation. Three, we're gonna repair the network. We'll use our documentation to help figure that out. And then four, we're gonna make sure that our table is completely filled out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start pinging from PC1 to all of our devices and the internet server. And so I'm gonna go up here, open up my command prompt and type in ping. From inside Word, I'm gonna change the view. I'm gonna click on view and I'm gonna use the split view here. What the split view will allow me to have is my uh, part four table here to document my problems, but I can scroll up in the top part of my split view to see what my IP addresses are. So that way I can keep both of those pieces of information up. Okay, so I'm here in PC1 in my command prompt. I'm gonna ping PC2, PC2's address right here 192.168.3.50 192.168.3.50 i can ping pc3 just fine or pc2 let's go ahead and ping pc3 192.168.4.115 so ping 192.168.4.115 uh-oh well hopefully we're doing an arp lookup Looks like we're timing out, timing out. Oh, it's looking like PC1 can ping PC3. Let's have it fail one more time. Oh, there's an issue. So PC1 here, the issue is cannot ping PC3. So PC1 cannot ping PC3. Okay, let's continue on. So that was PC3. Let's go ahead and look at PC4. Let's see if we can ping PC4. So ping 192.168.5.83. Okay, I'm missing a decimal point. So 192.168.5.83. Can we ping PC4? Oh, we had to do an ARP lookup, but the other three worked. I'm just going to repeat that to make sure it works. So PC1 can ping PC4. Let's go ahead and see if we can ping PC5. 192.168.5.227. So ping 192.168.5.227. Okay, hopefully we're doing an ARP lookup. Failed once. Well, that's not good. PC. Well, PC1 can ping PC5. Okay, so we're starting out there. PC1 and then cannot ping PC5. Oh, that was PC5. Now let's go ahead and look at PC6. See if we can make that ping. Ping 192.168. Dot 2.48. Was timed out. Not looking too good there either. Not looking too good there either. Just because we can't ping it, and this is the first time we see the air, that doesn't necessarily mean it's on PC1. So PC1. And then cannot 
ping PC, and that was 2.48, which was PC6. Okay, now ping PC6. And then the last one here we got to ping is PC7. So to ping that IP address is ping 192.168.2.67. Okay, so first one timed out. Doesn't look like we're doing an ARP lookup. Like this one's going to fail also. So PC1 looks like it can't ping out. Okay, so we, we need to do some troubleshooting. So PC1 and not ping PC7. And the last thing we have to do is ping our internet server. 203.100.113.27. Let's go ahead and ping that. So ping 203.0.113.27. Okay, so we got one timeout. Doesn't look like it was an ARP lookout or lookup timeout. Looks like that's going to fail also. So we have some troubleshooting to do. So PC1 cannot ping the internet server. Okay, we need to start doing some troubleshooting. First thing we're gonna do is, why don't we start pinging some different things. What we're gonna do is ping our default gateway and some devices in, in we were able to ping our default gateway. How do we figure out what our default gateway is? IP config gives us our default gateway. Let's go ahead and ping that. Make sure that works. Ping 192. Okay, starting over. 192.168.1.1. We're able to ping that. We're able to ping some PCs and not all the other PCs. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and take a look here. Okay, using ICMP, we did the ping. Let's go ahead and try doing a trace route. So trace route. And it's trace RT in Windows. Let's go ahead and ping one that didn't work, PC3. The IP address for PC3 is 192.168.4.115. 192.168.4.115. Oh, we are we are able to get to our own default gateway, but then we're able to get to 192.168.0.1 if we look at our network documentation. So I'm looking at the map from last lab. The lab here says that's my interface on the hub router. But then we start timing out. Normally, I let it go two or three lines here for the request timeout to make sure that there's nothing weird, but it's timing out. It's only getting to the hub router. Okay, we're going to wait a little bit, a little song issue here. Now, this, this typically what it means is there's an issue likely related to the path that PC1 is taking to reach the internet. The trace indicates that packets only make it to the hub that we don't make it any further okay so i'm going to stop it here i'm just going to do a trace rt to the internet server to see how that looks so 203.0.113.27 once again we're stopping at 192.168 how do, how do i know it's stopping it didn't appear there so it did say 192.168.0.1. Took it away because I highlighted it, something weird. But we are able to make it to the hub device right here, but then it stops. What we what we need to do is probably tell not to the hub and see what's going on. I'm gonna get control C. Looking at my network documentation, I'm on PC1. 
PC ones connected to the branch router. From the branch router, I can get to the hub router. So let's go ahead and tell that to my default gateway. Tell that once again, that was 192.168.1.1, which is the branch router. Cisco is my VTY password. Type in enable. Class is my privilege exec password. From here, now I can go ahead and tell that into the hub router. And looking at my documentation, that hub address here, and I'm gonna type in Telnet, that address is 192.168.0.1, which is also this last IP address I got to. So VTY password is Cisco, enable, privilege exec password is class, we are in. Now, it, it had to do with getting to the internet, getting through our devices. Let's go ahead and do a show show running, see what we have going on here. Show run. We have some information looking through here. We have, here we have some interfaces happening. We have our gig 000 interface. With, an IP, with our IP address, it says IP NAT outside. So this must be going to our server on the outside. Now I'm looking at my documentation here. So gig 000 on hub, because that's where we're at. I don't actually have on my documentation. So I'm gonna draw this and point it to the internet server. This was G zero slash zero slash zero. So we're doing IP NAT outside for that. Then we have interface here, gig zero zero one we're not using. Interface serial zero one zero that's connected to branch one, IP address, clock rate. We have interface serial zero one one that's going to branch two, IP address that says NAT inside. Serial 010 didn't say NAT inside. Hmm. Okay. Serial 020 also says NAT inside. Serial 0211 also says NAT inside. This is where we are connected. We are connected into branch one and it doesn't say IP NAT inside. So we can't ping there. Well, the pings are probably making it, but it doesn't know how to get that coming back here we're not doing any network address translation we need to add ip nat inside to serial zero zero or serial zero one zero so control c go into global configuration mode go into our interface of serial zero one zero and say ip nat inside i forgot my space in there Exit out, exit out. Let's go all the way back to PC one. So I type in exit again. I'm on branch one, exit again. Now I'm on the PC. Let's go ahead and ping our internet server. And that was a ping to 203.0.113.27. 203.0.113.27. And now ping works. So we couldn't ping here. What it turned out was hub on, and where did we put that? We put it on serial 010. Serial 010 needed IP NAT inside to make it work. Okay. Okay, that looks like it took care of one problem. Now, just because we can't ping the other PCs doesn't mean the PC problems on PC1. It looked like everything else was set correctly. Let's go ahead and look at PC3 here. PC3 command prompt Let's go ahead and ping 
the IP address for PC1, 192.168.1.53, 192.168.1.153. That's probably going to air out because it aired out the other way. And let's see if we can ping the internet server. Okay, so that's timing out. So let's go ahead and try pinging our internet server. Once again, address the 203.0.113.27. That's looking like a timing out. So PC3 can't ping PC1 internally. We can't ping externally to the internet server. Right, we're timing out. So that's speaking like it's something close to here. Well, one of the first things we should do is let's check out our IP configuration. Let's go in here. Let's type in IP config and see what that says. So our IP address here for PC3, here's our PC3 information. Our IP address is .4.15. That's what we have right here. Subnet mask is a slash 24. That's what we have right here. And we have our default gateway, 192.168.4.1. That all looks pretty good. Now, this is looking good. Shows that our addressing is correct. We also have green lights here saying that this, we have green light here, we have green light here showing us that this connection is good. And so that means that connection's up with the switch. Now, PC2, remember how we looked at our documentation, PC2 and PC3 connected into the factory router, and that factory router connected into the hub. PC2, let's try pinging our internet server, 203.0.113.27. PC2 connected into the same factory router that's connected into the hub router that's connected into the internet that's able to work just fine but pc3 is having an issue with having pc2 work and pc3 work that means that it's probably pc2 works pc3 works pc3 had all the correct information set on it it's probably maybe something on the factory router so let's go ahead and telnet into the factory router i'm going to do that from pc2 so telnet Get our factory router IP address or the default gateway. So, I mean, we could use any one of these addresses typically, or we can come here and type in IP config, IP config, and that will give us our default gateway and just telnet right into that device. Telnet into 192.168.3.1. This goes our VTY password, enable, classes our privilege exec password. And let's go ahead and check out a couple things. First thing I like to do is look at our show running. Is there anything that's jumping out? So we've got password set. We have gig ethernet 000 up and running. We have gig 01 with an IP edge. Oh. Gig 001 is shut down. According to my documentation, that is the interface that's connected to the switch that's connected to PC3. So this one is shut down. Even though it doesn't show us on our diagram here because the con it goes from PC3 into the switch. So that's up. And then everything else is hidden by the cloud. The thing that's connected from PC3 to the switch to the router looks like the router interface is shut down. We can see that right here. So what we have to do is go and turn that on. So here, one of our problems here. So maybe it wasn't on PC3 or on PC1. It was on PC3 here. PC3 cannot ping default gateway. Can't ping our own default gateway. Uh, did we actually do that? I believe so. Exit. Oh, we need to go to PC3 here. Here's our default gateway. 
on PC3, let's try pinging it just to make sure. 192.168.4.1. At 4.1. PC3 cannot ping its own default gateway. So we did have to use PC2 here to tell that in. My connection closed here. So let's go ahead and reinitiate that connection. Uh, Cisco is our VTY password. Enable class is our privilege exec password. And we came up here. And we saw, let's go ahead and just do a show run again, or actually we can do a show IP interface brief, make the window a little bit wider so it lays out. And right here, gig 001, the one that provides the default gateway for the LAN that PC3 is on, is administratively down. Let's go ahead and turn that on. So get in the global configuration mode, config T, go into that interface here of gig 001, interface g0 slash 0 slash 1 and do a no shutdown exit exit let's go back to pc3 now and let's try to ping our default gateway 192.168.4.1 i hit up arrow hit enter okay is it gonna work or not Oh, look at that. It took it took a little bit of time to go through the negotiation of the ports and come back up, but it finally did. Let's repeat that command one more time. And there we are. We are able to ping our own default gateway. So PC3 cannot ping it. What we did was, going back to look at H2, we were on the factory router. So to fix this, factory router activated and which port did we activate we activated the one that was down gig 001 so we went into gig 001 and we did a no shutdown on it gig 0 slash 0 slash 1 oh okay so back to pc3 here pc3 We were able to ping our default gateway. Let's go ahead and ping the internet server. So ping 203.0.113.27. Okay. Hopefully we're doing an ARP lookup. So we're not able to ping there. Okay, well, that's an issue. Maybe we need to look at some more on the factory router. Okay, let's go back. Right now, PC2 is telnetted into the factory router. Let's repeat our show IP interface brief command. Yes, they're all up, so we have gig 001 showing up we have gig 00 or sorry we have gig 000 showing up 192.168.3.1 we have gig 001 is showing up 192.168.4.1 and we have a third connection serial 010 is showing up with 192.168.0.14 so we have three of those up Go ahead and do a show run again. See if we can see anything that might be sticking out. So we have our interfaces. We have our IP addresses. And we have them. We have the word shutdown not appearing anywhere. So gig 000 is up. Gig 001 is up. Gig 010, that looks pretty good. Serial 011, we are not using. We don't have anything set up for our VLANs. Here we have OSPF, process ID of 10. We have the network here, 192.168.3.0 with area zero. Network 192.168.12. 
with a wild card of 0, 0 0.3. Wait a second. We have three interfaces that are connected. So we have three directly connected networks, but we only have two network statements. We're missing one. So we have the dot three dot zero. We have the dot zero dot twelve. So we have the dot three dot zero. So this this network is specified. We have the dot zero dot twelve. This one is specified. We're missing the middle one. We are missing one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot four dot zero network. Okay, so we have to go and we have to add that in to our router OSPF. I'm gonna hit Control C so it stops right there. Let's go into global configuration mode. So config T, then we go into router OSPF with a process ID of 10. And let's add in that missing network. That was 192.168. Was the middle interface? Dot four dot zero. So dot one is the IP address. Dot four dot zero is the network address with a subnet mask of slash 24. So we've got 192.168. Oh, we got to start off with the word network because we're specifying what networks are connected. So network 192.168.4.0. Then we have to say what is wildcard mask. Subnet mask was a slash 24. So 24 ones followed by eight zeros. Going from a subnet mask to a wildcard mask, you invert all the ones to zeros and zeros to one. So a subnet mask had 24 ones. A wildcard mask now has 24 zeros at the beginning. At the end, subnet mask had eight zeros. Now a wildcard mask has eight ones. Turn that in. 24 zeros followed by eight, eight ones. Turns the wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255. And we are putting everything into area zero right now. Single area OSPF. So area zero. Exit out, exit out. Let's do a show run. Go down to our OSPF statements. And now we have three networks for our three interfaces that are connected. Let's go back to PC3 and see if we can ping our internet server. And now that the routing protocol, now that the router we're connected to, the factory router, knows the is advertising the correct networks, we now have network connectivity. And so the problem here wasn't necessarily on a PC, but it was actually on the factory router. And it was not advertising the correct networks. And what did we do to fix it? We went and I'm going to click on PC2 window because we're telnetted here into factory router. We added in this network statement. So on factory router added in network 192.168.4.0 and then 0, .0, .0, 0 0.0.0 at 255 area 0 into OSPF so we're advertising those statements in there so do some spell correcting here really quick and actually if we go back here the problem really wasn't here on pc3 it was on the factory router again and so the factory router now that we looked into it it wasn't pc3 it was the factory router and g00 wasn't activated so g001 not activated and so what did we do we activated g001 now, these last two down here i'm willing to bet they're not on pc1 or maybe not even on pc6 so let's go ahead and troubleshoot some of this uh let's go ahead and look at the other end let's look at pc6 pc6 
let's see what PC6 can ping. So let's go ahead and try and ping the internet server right away. See how big we can get. So 203.0, go big or go home. So 203.0.113.27. Host unreachable. So this address, 192.168.2.3 is unreachable. We are getting a message from this address. So this address is telling us 192.168.2.33. That is on branch two. If we look at our documentation, the branch two router that connects into the hub, that is our default gateway for that. So our, our branch router cannot get to the default destination. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's, we are able to ping our default gateway, which once again is the branch two device. So let's go ahead and look at branch two. Let's go ahead and tell that into branch two. Branch two's IP address is this default gateway right here, 192.168.2.33. You can see that. So let's go ahead and tell that right into that one. So 192.168.2.33. Asking for our password of Cisco enable privilege exec word pass privilege exec password of class. We are now into our device. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. I like to do a show running right away to see what is going on. Here's our interfaces G000 is connection to SWB2 switch two. It has no IP address on it. it. Has no IP address. So gig 000, according to our documentation. So on branch two here, that's the device we're on. Let's confirm it. So we're on branch two interface gig zero zero according to our documentation so branch two gig zero zero interface should have this ip address it doesn't have any okay let's go ahead put in that ip address i'm gonna just gonna hit control c get us right out i'm gonna go ahead and type in config t for global configuration mode interface and once again the interface here is gig zero 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 so interface g zero slash zero slash zero Let's go ahead and set that IP address up of 192.168.2.33. So IP address 192.168.2.33. Right? And our subnet mask at 255.255.255.224. So 255.255.255.224. Here we have our interfaces. Interface G000, that's the physical interface, so it shouldn't have an IP address, it's on. But our sub interfaces all have IP addresses on them. That's looking good. We are looking good there. Our third sub interface, we're not using interface G00. Here we have our serial 010 interface. IP address is looking good. Serial 0111, shut down, we're not using that. VLAN one, we're not using. Router adjacencies, that is looking pretty good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's do a show IP route, see what's going on here. We don't have a gateway of last resort, but when we're providing information there here we have our directly connected information uh, looking here serial zero one zero on branch two branch two serial zero one zero we have an ip address of 192.168.0.0 six here we have our address oh we have a wrong address there with a wrong address they're in different networks so whatever the other end of the connection is they're not communicating we need to go in and fix that okay let's go ahead and go in and fix that so config t 
interface, and then this was the interface that had the wrong address, so serial 010, so S0 slash 1 slash 0. And then this is what the IP address should be here, 192.168.0.6 with 255, 255, 255, 252 is the subnet mask. To change an IP version 4 address, just retype that command in. So IP address of 192.168.0.6, and then our subnet mask of 255.255.255.252. Exit out. Exit out, exit out again. And now we are back on PC6. We are trying to ping our internet server last. I'm just gonna up arrow. Right here is the ping for the IP address on our internet server, 203.113.220 or .27. And now that ping is working correctly. We had a wrong IP address that didn't allow it to communicate with anybody else. So our problem was here, it was on branch two. The problem was is we had an incorrect IP address on serial zero slash one slash zero. And what do we do? We corrected the IP address and that fixed the problem. And what we correct it to, 192.168.0.6. Let's fix these spelling errors. PC7 had an issue. Okay, let's go ahead and ping from PC7. Let's go ahead and ping the internet server, 203.0.113.27. Well, that's working. Go ahead and ping PC1. You see one right here, IP address 192.168.1.53, 192.168.1.153. Well, that's all working. Let's go ahead back to PC1 here. See what's going on. Let's go ahead and ping PC7. I'm on PC1, I'm gonna ping PC7 now. So 192.168.2.67. Well, that's working. Hmm. Okay, let's work our way backwards. I must have wrote down the wrong PC. So I can ping PC7. Let's go ahead and try ping PC6. 192.168.2.48. That 2.48. So 192.168.2.48. That's working. Okay, let's go ahead and ping PC5, 192.168.5.227.5.227. Oh, so I must have wrote down the wrong number. So it cannot ping PC5 is what we're looking for here. Well, PC1 is able to ping PC6 and 7 and everybody else. Let's go ahead and look at PC5 now. Maybe the problem is on PC5. So I'm going to open up my command prompt. I'm going to go ahead and ping our internet server here. I'm on PC5, so I'm going to ping our internet server of 203.0.113.255.255.255. So we can ping externally. Let's go ahead and ping our default gateway after this time's out. So PC5 default gateway is 192.168.5.129. Still timing out over here. I can hit control C, but just in case it kicks in, I'm gonna let it finish so that didn't work. Let's go ahead and ping our default gateway of 192.168.5.129. Pulled that from my documentation. So I can see my default gateway. Okay, pinging my default gateway. That worked. So I'm on PC5. Once again, I'm looking at my documentation. Very rough drawing here. 
PC5 goes to the HQ router. HQ router then goes to the hub. I'm going to go ahead and ping the IP address of the hub from here on PC5. So ping. And then that, that address was 192.168.0.9. So I can't get from the HQ router to the hub. Okay, so that means I should go and look at our HQ router, see what the configurations look like. Okay, we'll let it time out. Let's go ahead and telnet into our HQ router, which is my default gateway. Default gateway for PC5 is 192.168.5.129. So let's go ahead and go into that 192.168.5.129. Cisco is our VTY password. Enable. Class is our privilege exec password. Let's do... A show run here see if anything jumps out at us interface gig 001 doesn't have an ip address but that's the physical interface we have sub interfaces that all looks good we're not using g001 nothing set up on it it's shut down our serial 01 interface that's looking good our ospf that's all looking good Okay, so our problem was going between HQ and the hub. Let's go ahead and try and ping the hub from HQ router right away. So ping, and that address once again was 192.168.0.9. Well, that works. So it goes PC5 to the HQ router to the hub. PC5 can ping HQ. PC... Five cannot ping the hub so that means going through HQ but HQ can ping the hub let's look at our routing protocols I'm gonna do a show run here again go down to my routing protocols here it's listening all four of my interfaces so I have my three sub interfaces those are looking right I, I have my fourth interface of my serial interfaces. That is looking right. So it looks like my routing node is right. We can do a show IP route. Looking here, we do know how to get to all these different networks. We have our directly connected devices or interfaces. Those are looking good. Here we have some more directly connected uh, networks and interfaces. Those are all looking good. We learned how to get to these remote networks. That's looking good. I mean, HQ router is looking good. Let's go back to PC5 and take a look there. So I'm currently telneted into HQ router. I'm going to go ahead and type exit. That broke, that ended my telnet section and I'm at back at PC5's command prompt. It says C colon right there. That lets me know. Let's go ahead and just check our IP config here. Our IP config, we have our IP address. That is what PC5 should have is our IP address. And then our default gateway is all zeros. That's not what we should have. We should have 192.168.5.129. We shouldn't have. So that allows us to ping our directly connected devices because they're on the same network. But as soon as I try to ping something else outside of the network, like the internet server, like our hub router, it doesn't know how to route it there. It doesn't know what my default gateway is. Let's go ahead, add in this default gateway. I'm gonna close my command prompt right here where it says command prompt in the blue line. I'm gonna go over to the X. From here, I'm gonna click on IP configuration. Right here is our default gateway. Default gateway is set to all zeros. It should be 192.168.5.129. 192.168.5.129. Go ahead, set it in. I just click in another field to make sure it's okay. I'm going to close the IP configuration app where it says IP config in the blue line. Go all the way over, click on the X. Let's open up our command prompt. And let's 
look at our IP config statement again. IP C O N F I G. We now have our IP address with our subnet mask and the default gateway. So let's go ahead and try pinging the a the hub router again. So that was ping, and then that address was 192.168.0.9. I'm now able to do it. Because that device is not on my network, I now have a default gateway that pushes all, all non-local area networks, not with the same network portion, it all pushes it to the default gateway, which is my HQ router. HQ router then knows how to route it to its destination networks. Let's go ahead and try pinging our internet server. So ping 203.0.113.27. And that works now also. So the problem wasn't on PC1 here. It was on PC5. What was the issue? We could not ping anything off of our local area network. What do we do to fix it? Added in our default gateway on PC5. That takes care of all of the issues we found. That was Packet Tracer Lab 12.6.2. Troubleshoot challenge, use documentation to solve issues. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuration examples. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There, you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on practical configuration examples for the CCNA. I've created four wonderful playlists for you on the CCNA. These episodes, I go through all the concepts that Cisco calls out for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.